an actor is saying his lines, and then, what, out of nowhere, he just starts singing? Yes! After critical acclaim and earning 10 Tony nominations, Something Rotten is coming to Music City. Its setting, script, and score have a major Nashville connection. Travel back to the Renaissance with an original story and some famous characters shown in a brand new light. Your starlet won't quit, big hit music. I'm Tawanda Coleman. Welcome to Backstage with Something Rotten. Since its Broadway debut in 2015, there's been a lot of buzz surrounding the comedy musical Something Rotten. Nominated for 10 Tony Awards in its first year, the show has received rave reviews from both critics and audiences alike. They sing the show's praises for being original, for its talented cast, and for being just plain laugh out loud funny. After more than 700 shows on Broadway, Something Rotten is now touring the country and will soon be in Nashville, here at the Tennessee Performing Arts Center. Recently, we caught a show, met the cast, and got a backstage tour. And what we found was, indeed, there is nothing rotten about something rotten. Welcome to the Renaissance with poets, painters, and bones of us. Something Rotten isn't based on a movie, play, book, or any other material. It's a completely original stage production described as a musical comedy about the first musical comedy. Are you at the When the curtain comes up and just the, the color palette and the, all the, you see all the characters, they're all so distinctive in their poses. It tells you what kind of night you're in for. Welcome to the Renaissance with poets, painters, and born The opening number and all that's to follow was the idea of Grammy-winning Nashville songwriter Wayne Kirkpatrick and his brother Carrie, an award-winning screenwriter. The Kirkpatrick brothers dreamed up the world of something rotten when they were just teenagers growing up in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Me and my brother both always wanted to write a musical. I grew up, I was in uh, theater all through high school, so was my brother. We've always had a love of theater and we're, and we're writers, we're both writers. So one day we're going to write a musical, that was, that was our goal. And it just took us about 20 years to do it. Welcome to the it was more like four and a half years once they buckled down and got started. And to help them, the brothers brought British scriptwriter John O'Farrell on board. John is from London, and he knows a lot about Shakespeare. And so we thought, well, great, we won't have to read as much. <laughs> and before they knew it, a hit Broadway musical was born. A musical comedy created for those who may know a lot or nothing about William Shakespeare. I'm a great admirer and appreciator of, of Shakespeare. I, I'm, I'm an admirer of what he's contributed to the English language and to theater. Um, but, you know, this show is not really about Shakespeare. It just uses Shakespeare to tell our story. The story that three gifted writers came up with is the hilarious tale of the Bottom Brothers, who are trying desperately to make it to the top. Two brother writers are looking for the next best hit. Two brothers who are competing with Shakespeare during the Renaissance. And one of them wants to just be himself and uh, celebrate what's different about him, and one is chasing someone else's dream. Imagine Shakespeare is Garth Brooks, Tim McGraw, and Blake Shelton all rolled into one. He's the mega superstar. Who I like to think does have some talent and does have some ability, but is also not above uh, stealing other people's ideas when necessary. Enter a soothsayer trying to aid and abet their stardom. And they go to a soothsayer to try and uh, see what the next big thing in theater will be. And when he tells them that it's musicals, they set out to write the world's first musical. And hilarity ensues. 
Wow, that's awesome. But you know, you're the ideas man. I'm really just a poet at heart. I feel like I'm holding you back. Oh God, am I the problem? No, no. Shakespeare is. God, why did I ever suggest he become a writer? I only wanted him out of our troupe because it was so annoying. The show features a talented, solid cast of performers. This cast is every bit as good as the Broadway cast. And of course, as you know, some of them are the Broadway cast. So it is just, there, there are just stellar performances across the board with these guys. The three male leads, Tony nominee Rob McClure, Josh Grissetti, and Tony nominee Adam Pascal stayed on in their roles after Something Rotten ended its Broadway run. I read your sonnet. It's good, quite good. I'd love to read more. Is that your folio? Oh, this, no. No, no, this is just a collection of thoughts and writings and musings. Would you like me to give it a looky-loo? Uh, what am I saying? Of course you would, I'm Shakespeare! The Bard. Why is he the Bard? He's a Bard. Like, I'm a bard, you're a bard. He's just one of the bards. Rob plays Nick Bottom, the oldest brother and driving force of the Playwriters Partnership. Nick is desperate to write a successful play so that he can support his family. He's tired of living in the shadow of William Shakespeare. Oh, no, God, I hate Shakespeare. His plays are wordy, but oh no, the great Shakespeare. I think he's an insecure mess. <laughs> no, but I think, um, I think he's sort of the way in for the audience. The audience is pulling for Nick. If there are, you know, husbands who get dragged to the theater by their wives to see this show, and they know nothing about Shakespeare and nothing about musicals, Seeing a husband trying desperately to compete in an industry and support for his family uh, is something that they can relate to. Wait, what is it? It's up. Oh, a musical. I love it. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> now, now, we just have to figure out what it's about. Josh Grazetti plays the role of the sensitive younger brother, Nigel. This show is such a joy to do, and the role is such a great role to play. Well, Nigel Bottom is sort of the, um, the romantic and the voice of reason and sort of the heart of, uh, of our wacky, you know, musical comedy. Um, certainly of the two brothers, you know, Nick and Nigel, he's the one who, who brings a little bit of the, <laughs> the quiet and, uh, and uh, reasonableness to the, to the two of them. Put your hands together for the one, the only, William Shakespeare! And then there's William Shakespeare, played in a way we've never seen the famous bard before. Shakespeare, a tight leather pants wearing rock star? Seems that way, because Adam Pascal sells the idea as though it were an historical fact. And the rough wind shake. When you're given material that kind of all you have to do is go out and, and say the lines and they work, well, I mean, there's no better project to be involved in than something that spoon feeds you such wonderful material. I am the will with the skill to thrill you with my quill. I am the hard working bard you regard. The great thing about William Shakespeare is that none of us know him. None of us did know him. None of us know anything about what he was actually like. So we have these sort of poetic license to sort of make up whatever stories we like about what his personality was actually like. There's no question William Shakespeare loves himself. So does everyone else, except Nick. I mean, he walks around like David Bowie or Mick Jagger. Good night! Good night! Parting is such sweet sorrow! We've got a woman on the throne, and by the year 1600, women will be completely equal to men. Maggie Laskus plays B, Nick's forward-thinking wife. B is a woman ahead of her time. Um, <laughs> She is trying to find some equality in her marriage. She wants them to be more of a partnership. And, um, and through doing that, she kind of becomes like a feminist before they were feminists. Um, but it's all from the point of view of she just wants to be able to help. I'm more than just a woman, baby. When the pressure's coming, baby, let me be your right hand man. I guess it helps, too, if you're married to your leading man. Now, here's where fact meets fiction. Rob and Maggie are indeed married in real life. What spectacle I have seen the future! What, what is it? The biggest, most fantastic thing in theater will be musicals. 
one of the most unusual characters in the show, and one who draws some of the biggest laughs, is played by Blake Hammond. Uh, Thomas Nostradamus is a soothsayer who lives in Soothsayer Alley, and he uh, likes to predict the future. That's what he does for a living. And uh, he's very confident in what he does. The only problem with that is he's not really very accurate. We'll do a musical. Something Rodden works on many levels, from the opening number to the finale. It is a thoroughly entertaining show. It's a love letter to musical theater, and I think it makes fun of musical theater while simultaneously um, paying tribute. From a childhood dream to a smash hit musical that garnered them 10 Tony nominations, the Broadway first timers saw their dreams realized in a big way. First off, we hoped that people would think it was funny, because we did, and we hoped that people would have a good time in the theater, enjoy it, and also feel the love that we have for the theater, and that the songs would resonate, and that it would just be a somewhat of a celebration of theater. And we just really hoped that people would embrace it for, and, and appreciate it for what it was and have a good time. Whatever we were hoping for, it feels like it went beyond that. The music and lyrics that Kirkpatrick's wrote for the show work together to create a lot of special moments. The man responsible for bringing the brothers' vision to life in the orchestra pit is a man with his hands full. Up next, hear how the show's music director is able to pull off three full-time jobs at once. We're going to do the shampoo. Then, it's a back to the future of dance. See how tap, hip-hop, and other forms of modern dance find their way into the Renaissance era and take along a certain reporter when this backstage tour of Something Rotten continues. We know that the great city of Nashville has a lot of wonderful entertainment, so why should you spend any of your money coming to see Something Rotten? Um, because it is not Something Rotten. It is a great evening at the theater. You deserve a break. You deserve to laugh for two and a half hours, and I guarantee that you will at this show. Hello, Nashville. You need to see something rotten because why? It's the funniest show you're gonna see all year long. Come laugh with us. Oh, what spectacle I have seen the future. What, what is it? The biggest, most fantastic thing in theater will be musicals. Night after night, the fifth number in something rotten called a musical earns a rigorous standing ovation. It's the same show-stopping tune that opened the 2015 Tony Awards. Bright lights, stage fights, and a dazzling chorus. You want to be great, then you got to create a musical. A musical is a cleverly written, nearly eight-minute, hilarious number with countless references to some of our most beloved Broadway musicals. The song has so many musical references that even the cast have a hard time catching them all. I was talking uh, on opening night, I was talking to uh, Carrie Kirkpatrick, one of the writers of the show, and I was talking to him about uh, the song, A Musical, which, you know, has so many hidden uh, references to many musicals, and he told me there's a Fantastics reference in musical that I have yet to hear. What? Yeah, there's a Fantastics reference, and oh, he played it for tonight. me, but I was like, oh, I'll have to, but I, I can never hear it. A musical is just one of many memorable tunes you'll hear throughout the show. There's just one great song after another. So it's not surprising that among Something Rotten's 10 Tony nominations, there was an individual one for Wayne and Carrie for Best Original Score Written for the Theater. That was completely unexpected because, I mean, really, we were, it's like, really our biggest concern was, is anybody going to come see this? You know, so the Tony, the, that was just, you know, icing on the cake. Although he may have been a novice at composing musicals, Wayne Kirkpatrick is a bona fide pro at writing hit songs. He's a mega hit maker who long before he had earned a Tony Award nomination had already won countless Grammys, Doves, and other prominent awards, including a Grammy for the 2002 Song of the Year, Change the World. The song, a musical, 
we would sit around the table and, you know, my daughter would go, I can see this. This, this could open the Tonys. And I'm like, let's not get it. Let's just see if we're going to get on a Broadway stage, first of all, much less, you know. But it would talk about that in this kind of dreaming kind of sense of one day open the Tonys. And it opened the Tonys. Five, six, seven, eight. I have like the best number of my entire career. About 25 minutes in the play, you meet me. And we do that number. And um, it kind of brings down the house. It's a lot of fun. Wayne and Carrie may have written the songs for the show, but the man responsible for translating them on the live stage is the tour's music director, Brian Kennedy. This one gets the biggest laugh. It's a musical for us, Annie. Not only is Brian the music director, he's also one of two keyboard players, as well as the show's conductor. It took a lot of choreography, honestly because the, the score is maybe 300 pages. As you saw in my setup, I have about four pedals at my feet. There's two computers, there's speakers, there's stands, there's that mixer that has a lot of buttons on it. So I really did kind of get to make this book to be something that I could do three jobs at once. Our cast is great. Our cast puts out 110% every time. They found a way to give a consistent performance every night, but it still feels fresh and new, and I don't know how they do it, because that, that looks exhausting up there. It's gonna be great, gonna be great. Tony winner Casey Nicolo's choreography for the show consists of a variety of fast-paced dance styles and movements. You will see everything from tap to ballet to jazz and hip hop. There's a lot of high energy dance sequence throughout Something Rotten. And the two people who work with the dancers and do an incredible job with that is Brandon Bieber. He is the dance captain along with Mandy Black, who is the assistant dance captain. And you guys are going to sort of, sort of teach me one of the dance routines from the song Willpower. Yes. So <laughs> you're able to teach someone who has two left feet <laughs> what you professional dancers do. <laughs> You'll be fine. Going low, five, six, seven, eight. Dancing is not exactly my expertise. So I was glad Brandon and Mandy went easy on me, choosing one of the easier routines. There's William Shakespeare. Will, two, three, four, power. Step, touch, step, touch, step, touch, step, touch. One, two, three, four, power. Two, step, touch, step, touch, point. Shampoo. I think I got it. Hit, hike, hit, hike, shampoo. Set. Rome wasn't built in a day, no? I know, I know. I should stick to my day job. Yeah. Yay! Yes! Woot! So just how easy is it to transform into a singing, dancing fortune teller? I see it! Coming up, we'll go inside the dressing room where the transformation into Nostradamus is made and a look inside the cast's wardrobe when Backstage with Something Rotten returns. Hi, Nashville, you have to come see us. If you, if you like to laugh, if you like to have fun, if you like to smile, then it really it's a no-brainer. There's something for everyone, mm -hmm. there really is. I personally guarantee you will leave oh. the theater happier than when you entered. Yeah, I'll second that emotion. I approve this message. I approve this message. High five for Nashville. Yeah, Come Nashville. See Come see us. <laughs> it's a musical. It's a musical. Something Rotten is a visually enticing show. Colorful lights, elaborate costumes with bold hair and makeup that pull you in and transport you back to the 1600s. A musical. Out of all of the cast, Blake has to make the biggest physical transformation, turning himself into the larger-than-life soothsayer, Thomas Nostradamus. I'm aging myself is what I'm doing. I'm going from my lovely, cherubic, young face to some what a more uh, craggly old guy with pockmarks and uh, crazy, crazy hair. It's about a 10 to 15 minute process total. What's the um, first step? Base. Then we start with lines, and there, we do browns, then blacks, 
Then we whiten and highlight, and then we blend everything. And then I paint my eyebrows a little bit, then I make my face a little pockmarked. And then we powder everything. And then I do eyeliner, mascara, and then in comes the hair and beard. The final touch is the, is the coat. And Mr. Thomas is here. Back here, it gets quite busy. Behind the set, there are dozens and dozens of costumes. Production stage manager Jeff Norman makes sure every piece is where it needs to be, when it needs to be there. This is where you have all your costumes. That's right. Right behind this blackout curtain is the stage. So when the cast is on there performing a scene, the rest of the cast who's off stage are in this female quick change area, wow. getting ready for our next costume. So the racks, we travel the costumes in these gondolas that the cover comes down for traveling and everything's stored in here. But each actor's costumes are divided up into uh, what scenes there are or what that look is. Our female ensemble has like 17 different costume changes in the show. So that's what we're seeing. This so is the female That's right. This area. is just the female area. Upstage of us here is the male area. Oh, wow. When the cast only gets back here when they have more than a minute and a half. If the change is under that time, the chances are they're doing it in the wings. Well, I'm just looking at this boot, Jeff. That's right. It's laced in the back. Yeah, and sometimes the boots are cheated with zippers too, so oh, they don't yes, have to do good. the lace up, well, but they'll good. do the zipper to get into them. But they're quite somebody's got to help them get that on pretty that's, quick. That's right. Yeah. So these are all preset by the chairs when they need them, and uh, the, that's probably the last thing they'll put in before they run off on stage. So sometimes they're doing the zippers up just before they make an <laughs> entrance. So. Backstage surrounding the gondolas of costumes are tables and shelves full of intriguing set pieces and props. And then here we've just got a bunch of props, all preset for, or getting ready to be preset for the show. It's basically where it ended on our sh last show Sunday night. Um, so there's a lot of furniture, furniture on wheels, pieces that move. Yeah. Um, even the prop boxes we have for the small hand props, so everything travels in there. But everything else has to be packed up, in, uh, whether it's boxes, crates, yokes, benches. Do I um, see a rubber chicken? There is one. <laughs> yes. oh. we have every, uh, I don't think we have a kitchen sink, but we almost have everything hmm. but that. So. Okay. Well, um, I'll be curious to know how that's used. Exactly. Well, you'll, you'll be able to see that early on in the show. If you'd like to laugh, and you're looking for something completely original and new and refreshing that uh, will surprise you in many ways and treat you to an excellent evening of theater, I would say come and see something rotten. Hi everyone, this is Adam Pascal. I play Shakespeare in Something Rotten. And you need to come see this show because it is a guaranteed evening of belly laughs, wonderful music, fantastic performances, um, and you will get to experience the Renaissance in a way that you never did before. Your starlet won't quit, big hit musical. I can't wait for it to come to Nashville. I really, I, this excites me as much as seeing it on Broadway, really. Um, I've been coming to see shows at TPAC for ever since I've lived here. I've been here over 30 years. And ever since I've been here, I've, I've gone to see musicals and plays at, at TPAC. So to now have my musical playing there, that it's just, it's a full circle moment. I'm just, I'm so thrilled to be able to have something that I've written be performed on the stage at TPAC. We're thrilled too. There are a lot of people excited to see the show. It's coming to the Tennessee Performing Arts Center June 27th through July 2nd. Tickets are on sale now at tpac.org. Well, we hope you've enjoyed your backstage tour of Something Rotten. And we hope you'll get a chance to see the show. It is everything a smash hit first musical should be, whether it's in the minds of the Kirkpatrick, or the Bottom Brothers. I'm Tawanda Coleman. Thanks for watching. Take it from me. <laughs>